Now in her seventh season as TV's feistiest anchor lady, Murphy Brown, a great pleasure to welcome as our first guest on this effort here at CBS, a lady who never hesitates to say exactly what's on her mind, and that'd be Candace Bergen. And thank you so much uh, for coming over here tonight and helping us get this thing up and running uh, at, at, at Channel 2 at CBS. Oh, Thanks a million, I'm, I'm flattered, I'm thrilled, and that guard must be feeling awfully bad now. Well, as I said to the guards, <laughs> watch the shows. <laughs> Let me ask you about Murphy Brown. You know, uh, Murphy Brown is, is a real person. I remember that when Murphy Brown was having her baby some seasons back, I was on the radio, and people would call and they would say, you know, Candace Bergen is pregnant. I said, no, 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 Candace Bergen isn't pregnant. Murphy Brown is pregnant. Let me, talk to me about, I'm sure you get letters where Murphy is the real person, and Candace Bergen is, is merely the, 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 the conveyor of that person. Well, my, my daughter was having people come up to her and say, oh, your, your mommy's having a baby, and... <laughs> And she, she was at an age where she wasn't quite sure. And I was like, no, it's, it's Murphy who's having the baby. Right. Um, yeah, well, it's, uh, I, I must say, it's, it's not just everyday citizens who make that mistake, Tom. Uh, this is true. It's also people in high office. That's right. And as a matter of fact, I remember one episode where Murphy Brown complained that she had lost her invitation to the inauguration of George Bush. And you can pick up the story from there. You got the real thing. Yes, yes. The the Bush administration um, fixed that right away and, and sent me or Murphy. I'm not exactly sure who it. I think it might have been me. But did you ever talk to Dan Quayle when that whole thing was going on? No. If 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 he were to walk in this room right now and we were having a conversation about it, what would your take on that whole incident be about family values? In this well, I, first of all, I think that both of us would have to have a sense of humor about the incident. Right. It was really beyond Rod Serling. And, um, and, and second of all, nobody disputed what, what he was saying about family values. We, you know, at Murphy Brown, we weren't saying that fathers are dispensable. I myself certainly don't feel that. And, uh, and Murphy Brown herself was not the demographic target of uh, the right. women that and she was And after all, about. we're talking about a television program here. This is not reality. This is a TV program. But I, I was often curious as to whether he ever tried to contact you or anybody with the production company? Uh, well, he did send uh, a note on our return, uh, our opening episode on our return. Um, I don't think we read it because I think it was, um, I think it was a little self-serving uh, or perhaps it was self-righteous. But, but finally, um, he has been vindicated to a certain degree by President Clinton embracing the same platform. Although you are a fictional character, Murphy Brown is a fictional character. How involved does Candace Bergen get watching the news? Uh, this whole circus last week involving the Gingriches, who will be on a little bit later, uh, the O.J. Simpson affair, the Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, all these things that we have had, uh, have been bombarded with here over the past eight, nine months. How do you as a television viewer who plays a newswoman look at all this stuff? Well, I, I look at it from a number of uh, viewpoints. I look at it as, as a citizen who is sometimes mind-boggled and outraged right, yeah, yeah. and offended at, uh, at the handling of certain topics by the media. And I look at it as someone who plays a journalist to try to get any sort of story ideas or any sort of personal, personal tidbits that I can for, um, for what we could bring to the show mm -hmm. in terms of accuracy mm -hmm. or style. Um, and, and I try to be as well-informed as I can because Murphy Brown is such a topical show. Sure. Um, but... Uh, and I also look at it from someone as a journalist trying to sort of be a partisan in, in terms of the media. But uh, I must say, at times, it's pretty hard. You know, when David Hartman was doing Lucas Tanner, MD, for NBC years ago, he was a medical doctor. And, and he got hooked on medical technology and that sort of thing. Have you gotten hooked on journalism at all? Well, I was hooked before I did Murphy oh, Brown really? on journalism. And I, and I had done quite a lot of journalism for about 15 years before I did A lot I of photography, Murphy right? Brown. A lot of photography, a lot of writing for Esquire and for Life right. magazine. And, uh, and a few episodes on the Today Show, sort of photo essays. So I, I really was a sort of a journalism fan before the show. So it was, it was perfect for me because mm -hmm. I could use everything. Although in college, that was not your major. In fact, uh, I have a friend who was a year ahead of you at the University of Pennsylvania, and she's told me, if you, like, like, you were Miss Penn University, were you not? I was. I was. I was. I yeah. Was. Hey, celebrate that, you know? <laughs> you, you did then, you should now. But your college career, much like mine, did not go very well, did it? It, it, it certainly didn't have longevity, no. no. <laughs> After two years, they wished me success and happiness in another field. Oh, they said goodbye to you? Yes, they did. They did. But then they, they very kindly gave me an honorary doctorate uh, about three years ago, or two years and ago. And what was your major at Penn? 
Uh, I actually didn't get that far, but my major was <laughs> almost art history and uh, journalism, in fact. Uh -huh. And so then it was off to New York. You spent some time as a model in New York? I spent very little time as a model because like I, said, I you started... spent very little time as a well, model. Well, I mean, I, I modeled uh, summers in between college. And then I went to New York and almost immediately started a movie, which was the group. All right. Now, if I were to pick a picture that I remember you when you played Margaret Burke White, the photographer, in the picture Gandhi. That's right. And you were one of the few in the picture who did not wear a diaper, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> you were in marked contrast to the male cast of that picture. And, and, and I, where I lose track is, is how you finally got to the point where I met you in New York and you were, you were wearing the bee suit for Saturday Night Live. I, I was in New York then, in fact, working for the Today Show and, and doing mostly writing, and, uh, and Saturday Night Live had just begun. And Lauren Michaels asked me to do, I think, the third episode, and then I did an episode a few shows later mm -hmm. and, and a few after that. And was, how happy an experience was that for you? Oh, you, know, was, you, know, you so much has been written about the negative part of that, where, where, there were a lot of, where there were drugs involved with certain people, and I'm not asking about that, but... How positive was that for you, that television oh, experience? Oh, it was, it was uh, euphoric. What, yeah. what Lorne and what all of them put together on that show was just an ecstatic experience. And, and certainly it mutated over time. And, and you really saw the power of the media because you saw Chevy Chase become a household. Sure. And Chevy Chase and you're not became a household expression in about a month. And, um, and, and everyone's lives on the show changed so dramatically. Uh, some, some for the good and some for worse. Yeah, remember how fast Chase took off, though? It, 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 yeah. in, in two weeks, everybody thought that he was the star of Saturday Night Live. You know, he came on, he did the Pratt Falls, he did the update with the phone and all this and that. And he was there for about a year, and then I think he left and, yeah. went, on, and, and went on to make but motion it, it, pictures. But it revolutionized television. We, we don't even remember because the show's been on so long, but in terms of its music, its production style, uh, the, the edge of its humor, and, and the performance that it Surely, produced. Surely, all of it, all of it. And so, to, uh, let me ask you here about uh, your life when you're not at Murphy Brown. I know that you have an eight or a nine-year-old daughter, Chloe, who is the light of your life. I know that you're married to one of the most respected motion picture directors in all of movies, Louis Malle. And you must have to spend some time apart when he goes on projects making films and stuff. Yes, we do. And so you're kind of a single mom every now and again. Yes. Is, how, how is that? Um, it's great, actually. Yeah. Sometimes I love to hog her all to myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not all against that. And when Louis's here, it's a little hard for me when I'm working because I feel the pressure to, to have him entertained and to, that he not be sure. bored in Los Angeles. And sometimes I'd really rather just but stay like, home. But are you at lines. the PTA or it's, uh, it's, uh, it's equivalent at your daughter's school? Yeah. Do you get involved in her education? You know, they say that's yeah. very important. Yeah, always, yeah. always. Um, how is she in school? Good. Yeah, she, she loves her school, she's with very nice kids, and, and I make a real effort. I mean, if she has a Christmas program and I'm shooting the show on a Friday, really? I drive from Burbank all the way across town and get there and drive back, and yeah, I, I, don't, I don't miss anything. But she knows who you are. Yeah, yeah. but we don't, we don't pay much attention to it. I mean, it's, does, it's not given much freight in our house, and um, never has been, and I think that, that that's important. Okay, we're with Candace Bergen, folks. You can join us on radio or television on the toll-free exchange. The number is 800-95-CBS-TV. And, you know, for people who wear glasses, that's tough because now they have to try and figure out what the numbers are. So we'll, we'll be it. It. <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's 1-800-95-CBS-TV on uh, radio and television. We'll continue with Candace Bergen and the true magic, the true uh, incredibility of your telephone calls right after these messages. <laughs> If you're getting married, get ready to call David's Bridal, America's Bridal Superstore. This Sunday, by appointment only, it's our one-day $99 sale. An exciting selection of wedding gowns on sale for only $99. Plus, save on all other designer wedding gowns in sizes 4 to 26. Our entire inventory at 50% off comparable prices. For the gown of your dreams, call now for your appointment for this Sunday's $99 sale. David's Bridal, for better and for less. Excuse me, what do you notice about this raisin nut bran? It doesn't have any raisins. Look again. You're looking for plain raisins, but raisin nut bran has covered raisins you're going to love. I love them. That's what I said. Come on, Larry. Covered raisins, only in raisin nut bran. Whoa! Oh, I almost forgot. Now it tastes even better with softer covered raisins and crispier flakes. Come on, Larry. Discover a better taste. 
Only in Raisin Nut Bran. Mako Supreme Plus on sale now. Our Supreme Plus service is twice as good at half price. Now only $199. Mako Supreme Finish wraps your car in a new sunscreen coating that protects the rich, deep gloss. It's so durable, it's backed in writing by over 400 Mako Centers coast to coast. Come to your local Mako Center and get a $399 Supreme Plus deal. Now only $199. Half price. The Mako Supreme Plus sale. If that showroom shines your bottom line, get Mako. We're with Candace Bergen of Murphy Brown on CBS TV, Mondays at 9 o'clock. Uh, the number, by the way, translates to these following, uh, following numerical equations. That'll be 1095-22788. That's 952-2788. It might save you a little time deciphering your phone dial. Let's go to the phones. Uh, here is Donna in Reno, Nevada. Hello. Hello. Hi, Donna. My God, it works. There, <laughs> there is a God. Donna, there nice to hear God. from you. Hello. Good luck. Thank uh, you. If you were writing a review right now, Donna, what would it say? Uh, I'd say it was excellent. You, Thank you're you. always excellent. Thank you. Say hi to Candace. She's right here. Hi, Candace. Hi, Donna. What was, what was your biggest career influence? <laughs> I, think, uh, I think being born with the right parents, probably in my case. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're very talented. Well, thank you, Donna. You're very, very talented. And I do watch Murphy Brown. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, my biggest career influence probably was the luck of getting Murphy Brown. Yeah, but you did a lot of g good movies other than that. You know, oh, a few, a few every now and then. Oh, but I Starting think my... Over was a terrific movie. It was, Remember it was. I think movie. my father was a big career influence because humor was a, a very well-valued commodity in our house. When, yeah, did you, uh, when did you know that, uh, that Charlie McCarthy was like your brother? When did I know that he was my brother or yeah. wasn't my brother? Well, you know what I mean. When, when <laughs> yeah, you knew what was it like living with a dummy? No. Oh, Donna. Uh, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind, Donna. I'll ask the question. All right. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Dave Pauling pretending to be Donna? No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, well, Donna, it was an eccentric upbringing, um, but actually it was probably more interesting than a lot of kids' upbringing. And um, it made up for not having a brother until I became um, 14 and my real brother was born. Mm -hmm. Donna, I'm glad you called. Thank you for being our first. Hey, thank you, Tom. All right. Be well now. You too. Bye-bye. 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 Uh, when did you know that your father was in showbiz and that Charlie McCarthy was a great... You know what blows all of us away about your dad, and I knew your dad at the Bel Air Golf Club, is that here was a man that gained his fame as a ventriloquist, which is a visual art, on the radio. Yes. I mean, it's incredible. It required a great leap of faith. You yeah. only could take his word for it, because yeah. who would know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then you would see him in the movies, and occasionally he would move his mouth, because the discipline of radio allowed him to do that. But when did you know that this was going on, that this was... Oh, this from was... a very early age, I, because there was always a, a... When I was little, he was number one or two on radio, so mm -hmm. there was a, a buzz about all the time, and Charlie had the room <clears throat> next to mine, and... Um, I appeared on his radio show when I was really? about six or seven years old, throwing my voice. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, but uh, do ventriloquists really throw their voice, or do they just not move, not move their mouth when they're talking? Well, they have to sort of squeeze their voice to make it, if they're throwing their voice, to make it seem like it comes from another place. My father would do that a lot at home, and we'd go to the door, and oh, you're kidding, really? There. Oh, yeah. That's neat. I know when I was a kid, they had a thing you could buy to put in your mouth called the ventro. <laughs> Remember that? You'd put it in your mouth, and it would supposedly compress your tongue in such a way that you could throw your voice, but you always wound up spitting it out. <laughs> it, 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 it never seemed to work very well. And then at what age did you, uh, you, went, you went abroad to boarding school? I, I went to Switzerland to boarding school at, when I was 14. At, and how was that for a 14-year-old girl to have to leave home and mom and Well, dad? I actually was ready to leave home at really? that point. I was sort of ready to go out and about a little bit. And my parents left me at school when I was in September. They, they took me to Switzerland and took me to school mm -hmm. and, and uh, saw me off. And then they came back at Christmas time to have Christmas in Switzerland. And by then, um, I was smoking and ordering Bloody Marys, and my mother burst into tears, and my father. <laughs> and so, so I said, maybe this wasn't a good idea, because it was a finishing school in more ways than one. And so I, so oh, I, I sort of had to um, learn to stop smoking at 14 mm -hmm. and stop drinking. Um, 
but uh, I, that was actually fairly tame compared to a lot of other girls but at the how, school. But how ever did you get into Bloody Marys and cigarettes at the age of 14? Oh, easy. It was <laughs> really simple, huh? No problem. <laughs> Switzerland, who knew? Yeah, but you would think if you were at a boarding school that they would keep you more or less on premises. On well, they did. In fact, I was kept on premises when I set fire to the ceiling of a restaurant, <laughs> and um, it was evacuated, and then they realized that I was out to, without permission, and so then I was grounded for a month, but then I was back at it. But I'm, I'm clean now. Tom. By say, when did you straighten out, Candace? <laughs> I think at 15. Jeez, man, mom and dad come over. How's the kid doing? Buddy Mary's and cigarettes. Perfect. Age 14. <laughs> Bob in Lake Ozarks, Missouri. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi, Bob. How are you, Tom? I'm fine, thanks. Hope you are. I'm fine. Thank you, sir. Good. I was uh, calling. I had seen Candace on a uh, You Bet Your Life show, a oh. rerun of the Groucho Marx show when she was on with her dad. I was interested to see if that was the first time she'd ever been on TV. Or... Well, Tom, I'm trying to buy those tapes up, so if you have one... Just let me know how much you want for it. Hey, Bob, where did you see that show? Oh, it was just a, just a regular rerun. I, I'm not sure if it was cable or... Oh, it was cable, TV. Bob. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, especially since I was 11 and Groucho is dead. But uh, for, <laughs> for a teenager, you acted just about... Just about the, the same. same. as you do now. You're, you're very mature and... Well, thank you. Together. Actually, um... That was not my finest hour, I remember, but it was, I think, my first time on television. I think it was probably the first time anyone was on television at that point in time. Goes back a long but, time, Bob. Anything yeah, else, right. Bob? In her teens, right. Right. Anything else, Bob? Well, no. Uh, well, yeah, I was, uh, I uh, meant to call you uh, when you had Bob Cosmos on his last show. You were on his show. Right. I meant to call that day, that night, uh, but it was so late. But, uh, you know, it was just... So wonderful. Bob is just a great guy. Just a wonderful guy. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a pleasure Missouri, to sit here at CBS and spend a lot of time talking about him. It's terrific. <laughs> right. As a matter of fact, Bob, uh, Bob can I, can I inter interrupt you for a second here on your show? Yes, sir. Uh, Bob Costas actually called me today, and he sounds great. Oh, I was really uh, hoping you'd have him on today, but that's really great. I'm really glad. Bob? You're great. Tom. Your wish. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate your calling, and sadly, your wish tonight will not be coming true, but these things happen, right? Well, uh, right. That's true. That's but true, I'm Bob. I'm sure we'll see Bob again somewhere. Okay. Yes, we will. That'd <laughs> be a, a different network. Okay, Bob, glad you called. Thanks for being with us. Back Do you think with... Dave will call now, Tom? I beg your pardon? <laughs> no, he will not call. By the way, he was very generous to us tonight, you know, and he did some comedy bits, uh, which the folks have already seen back east that they'll see here in the, in the West. And uh, this has been a, a... Why do you keep referring to Dave? Well, didn't he used to call you all the time? Not all the time. He would well, call... sometimes. He, he would call, like, on, on anniversaries of shows. Well, and, you know, it's the first show. It's, he's producing it. it would be a, well, it's yeah, but know, I, He could call as some, some guy, some weird guy. I mean... Yes, he could, but okay. he's... But he didn't. He's resting, Maybe he'll call for Mrs. Gingrich. He's resting comfortably tonight. No, no, he's not. You know, Dave just doesn't rest comfortably. Dave is resting comfortably. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Back with more of your phone calls. Bob, call again. We'll talk about Costas. 800 95 227 -88. What a tune. <laughs> some you win, some you lose, you know. We're with Candace Bergen at 800-952-2788. You know, the, uh, the Gingriches, and I'm going to tell the audience backstage I've been referring to them as the Bickersons, so if, 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 if I say the Bickersons, it's that I've lost my mind. But the Gingriches named one of their daughters after you. They named her Candace because they were such enormous fans of yours. I don't know if you knew that. I, I was just told tonight. Yeah. And uh, we'd kind of like to test out the remote between here and uh, Dolphin, Pennsylvania. So would you mind just saying hello to the, to the Gingriches for a second? I would be thrilled. Put, put the Gingriches up there on the screen. Uh, this would be uh, Kathleen and Bob. Hi, how are you folks? Okay? We're just okay. fine, thank you. <laughs> try, try to hold down that enthusiasm now. <laughs> <laughs> say, hi to, say hi to Candace Bergen. She's right here, folks. Hi, Candace. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Gingrich. It's very nice to meet you. And, and I'm, I'm very flattered. I, I just would like to ask you, how does your son feel about your having named your daughter after me? Well, he wasn't around when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> usually, oh. usually, 
usually, usually I do the questions. That's a little thing we worked out with the oh, sponsor. That's okay, it's fine. I'm but you kidding. didn't lose control. No, no, not at all. No, no, I, I, I've never had it. But uh, uh, put, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, how, how did you happen, what was the motivation for, you, for your naming your daughter after Candace Bergen? It's a lovely name. But I mean, had you seen her on the air? Or uh -huh. on television or movies? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, yes. I'm not going to say how many years. No, 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 don't do no, that. No, I'm not going to ask. I wouldn't do that. I okay. wouldn't do that. Anyway, uh, we'll be back to you in just a second, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gingrich, and we sure do thank you for coming on tonight. And uh, I, have you got a cigarette going there, ma'am? Me? Yeah. Oh, I don't smoke. <laughs> Every picture I've seen of you in the papers, you've had one in your hand. Anyway, right. we'll I, be back with this. I beg your pardon? I have the ashtray right beside me. All right, terrific. <laughs> well, fire one up, kid. It's your own house. You can do as you please. <laughs> Thank and, you, and we'll be right back with you in a second. Thanks for joining us tonight. And thank you for making this a memorable, memorable evening. Well, Tom, congratulations. Well, thank on you. On your first show and your gorgeous set. And good luck. It is pretty nifty, isn't mm -hmm. it? Thanks for coming over, thank Candace. You. See you. All best and happy 1995. Tomorrow night, Dan Rostenkowski and Maya Angelou. Later in the week, Arianna Huffington and Kelsey Grammer. And coming up, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gingrich from their home in suburban Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's working so far, the technology. It's truly amazing what God has wrought here. We'll be right back. Watson, I want you. Now these messages. <laughs> mm. Kathleen and Robert Gingrich have every reason to be terribly proud of their son. Uh, last week, Newt Gingrich made headlines when he was sworn in as Speaker of the House, and Robert and Kathleen found themselves in the headlines as well. And I'm happy to say they join us this morning from their home in Dauphin, Pennsylvania. Folks, I know it's late at night, and thank you for staying up. All of us really appreciate your time, and good evening to you, folks. Good evening. Uh, uh, Let me ask you about this whole week that began uh, with the wonderful ceremony in the Capitol when Newt was sworn in as Speaker of the House, and then all of the media attention that has come to you from a whispered remark on a television news program. How, 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 how have your lives held together through all this? Well, I think we have each other. I can lean on Bob. Otherwise, I don't know. It was really a rough week, really. What, what were the roughest parts of it, Bob? There were really were no rough parts. As far as I'm concerned, it's a done deed, and the, better, the sooner forgotten, the better. Oh, I understand that. I, but, but, I mean, what about just the media attention? For example, I was told that Kathleen went to the hairdressers, and there was a reporter there from a magazine. And you probably wake up in the morning and you got a camera poking into your kitchen or waiting outside your driveway. What's it like? Have, I mean, I, I wouldn't like that kind of stuff happening at my house. And I, I know how this process works, for heaven's sake. Well, the, just, just the cost of the hairdresser alone is enough to break me. <laughs> but I, I, there's something I have to tell you, Tom. Okay. I've been thinking about your show all day. And for some reason, I have this terrific urge to run out and get a, a cheese steak. Well, if you want to do that, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Okay. Why, why do you have this urge, by the way? I don't know. It's, it's something to do with you and the show and just Philadelphia. Well, I used to work in Philadelphia, to be sure. Did you, did you really? Yes, I did. Did you like cheesesteaks? I love Pat cheesesteaks in Philadelphia. They were delicious, but now Pat uses cheese whiz, I hate to tell you. <laughs> oh, I'll never go back. So when you got to the uh, beautician today, uh, and, and the reporter was there, or was it ye yesterday, I forget which, uh, didn't you think, geez, don't these people ever, ever, ever let go? Well, she was very nice. She wasn't pushy. She didn't ask me anything that I couldn't answer. It was mostly about Nudie and his growing up. Right. And let me show you. Now, this, this is... Not, this is Oh, look at here. That's the Speaker of the House now. And how old was he at the, when that picture was taken? Oh, he was about 18. two, two. He was a beautiful little boy. He sure was. He, he sure, sure was. was. And what about those pictures behind you on the piano? I, I know you have the Time Magazine cover back there, and you have some pictures yes. of your daughters. Are those, are those family favorites back there? They're all family. Yeah, terrific. Yeah. The, th the thing that I was interested to learn in, in reading about you and reading about your family is that uh, Newt Gingrich was born in the hospital in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, right? Mm -hmm, sure was, And yep. at, at what point, Bob, did the family move to Georgia? 
Oh, that was a long time mm. afterwards. That was in 1960, right? We came back from Europe and went to uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. How many but of them things? How, how many of those things do you smoke a day? Who me? No, no. You're, uh, well, he doesn't smoke. I don't count them, so I don't know. Uh huh. Uh, I guess you haven't read the Surgeon General's report yet. <laughs> well, it it wouldn't do me any good. I got you. And yeah. uh, and I read in the papers that uh, that uh, Robert chews tobacco. Is that true, sir? <laughs> that's true. You know, I, I had to quit smoking, so that's my my sop. Have you have you got a have you got a chew going now? No, there's no place to spit. <laughs> I, I was with a fellow once. He said, you ought to try this chewing tobacco. And I didn't spit. I swallowed. And I, ch I choked for, for days. He says, no, you got to spit. Yep. Uh, what about yeah. your, uh, your military career? Is that, is that what took you to the South in 1960, Robert? Yeah, I was, I was originally in World War II in 45 and 46. Mm-hmm. I got out and went to college and then went back in in 51 as an officer. And I went to Korea. When I came back from Korea, I got the family and we went to Fort Riley. Right. From Riley, we went to France. From France, we went to Germany. And then from Germany, we went to Fort Benning. And how did, how did Newton and your other kids do? You know, we, we've often heard of, of army brats or military brats and how tough it is when they get yanked out of school and moved around the world or around the country. How tough was it on the kids with all the moving that you had to do in your career? Well, in the school year 1956 and 57, they started school in Fort Riley, Kansas, went for a period in Pennsylvania and finished the year in France. Mm -hmm. But it didn't, it didn't bother them as far as, as their scholastic uh, achievements went. There was, it didn't, well, it didn't bother them, period. Right. In other words, they kept up their grades and they didn't seem to be, uh, you know, socially bothered uh, they were socially the bothered to a certain extent that they make close friends and in a period of time they'd have to go someplace else and make new friends. Right. And and Kathleen, have you received a, a phone call from Mrs. Clinton or was it a, a letter inviting you? No. And... Yeah, it, it was a note to Nudie, a very gracious note inviting me to the White House. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. w when do you plan to go down there? Well, he, he's setting up all the arrangements, so I'm not sure, but I, maybe okay. this week. Oh, really? And mm -hmm. like, like when you meet Mrs. Clinton um, and you shake hands uh, and, and say hello, uh, what do you think the conversation will be about? Oh, boy, that's hard to say. I can always talk about my granddaughters. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. I mean if, if, when you meet Hillary Clinton, and, and you will do that, what will you say to her, do you think? Well, I'll tell her how great she said it is. It, she invited me to the White House and to a tour. Right. Really good. It is a lovely gesture on her part. Yes, it is. And mm -hmm. would you like to be whispering anything in her ear? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. All right. I think it'll be quite a while before I go whispering. Uh, I believe so. If you can hang on for a few seconds, I've got a commercial waiting back with some phone calls from all Americans who'd like to talk to you. They've seen your son, and I know they're pleased to see you with us tonight. We'll continue with Robert and Kathleen Ging Gingrich from their home in Dauphin, Pennsylvania. Uh, the toll-free exchange is 1-800-95-CBS-TV. That's 800-95-22788. I'm Tom. This is the Simulcast. We'll be right back after a commercial break. We're with Robert and Kathleen Gingrich from their home in Dauphin, Pennsylvania. Here now is Cindy joining us on the toll-free from Springfield, Missouri. Hi, Cindy. It's Tom, and you're on. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Cindy. How about yourself? Oh, I'm so alive in 95. <laughs> Terrific. So I wanted to, to tell the Gingriches, okay. first of all, congratulations on your son's success. Thank and um, I just wanted to ask you both, how do you feel about Rush Limbaugh? <laughs> I like him. I enjoy him. I think he's funny. I'm just sorry that they changed the hours that he's on so late at night. <laughs> oh, you mean, is that is that on television, Kathleen, or on radio? Because on radio, he's on during the daytime, isn't he? Yeah, from 1 to 3, I think. But he used to be on from 12 to 12.30 on TV. Oh, I see. And that was nice in the right. middle of the day. It was right. time for a break. And, and uh, what's the reason for the question, Cindy? Well, you know, Rush is a, um, you know, he's always talking about politics and things. So right. I just wondered how they felt, and I, I believe Rush likes Newt. Oh, there's no question about it. 
Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a very firm supporter of Newt. Yep, he's, uh, Rush is a devout Republican. Right, right. So anyway, I was just, um, you know, I just thought I'd shoot the stuff with you. You got it. Thanks for calling. Okay, have a good one. All right, talk bye -bye. to you soon. Uh, from nearby, here is Dottie in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. Hi there. Dottie in Collegeville, PA. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Dottie, how you been, love? Okay? Listen, I followed you over. Thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. I wanted to say to Mrs. Gangrich, yep. um, I wondered how she felt uh, with her son becoming such an important person in the United States. How do I feel about it? Uh-huh. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled, naturally, and I hope that he can do the job that he plans on doing. Well, if he does. Pardon? I, I, I was just going to say, let me ask you both what it must have felt like to stand uh, in, in the chamber in Washington, in the, in the capital of the United States of America. Uh, you, Robert, a, 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 a distinguished military veteran with a record of service to his country, and to, see, uh, and to see your kid become Speaker of the House of Representatives and third in line for the Presidency of the United States. It's got to be a great moment for you. It was definitely it was a great moment. and It's like, like nothing has ever happened to me before. It, it, it's, you, you can't compare it to anything else. Oh, I'm sure you can't. I'm sure you can't. Uh, so, Dottie, how are we doing? Okay? Hey, I'm doing great, Tom, and I just wanted to tell you that I wish you lots of luck with your new uh, position. Right. And well, it's, it's, it's about uh, uh, Dottie. Yes. I'm, in the, I'm in the same position I've always been in. I'm just on a different television network right That's now. That's what I mean. Yeah, but but how are we doing tonight? Are we okay so far? Hey, you're doing great. All right, Dottie. I'm glad you called. Thanks. Okay. You All take right. care, Tom. I'll do the best I can, Dottie, and thanks for ringing us up. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Uh, uh, do you folks keep uh, keep in touch with politics? Are, are, are you fans of politics uh, because your son's been involved in it now for so many years? Not really. No? Not really. I keep scrapbooks of nudie. Oh, I understand that, but I, yeah. you know, just wondered if you, ha if, if you watched a lot of TV, watched the politicians oh, on Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 21, 22, and 29. Yep. That's C not... CNN and C-SPAN. Got you. Got you. And I noticed uh, on the other programs that I've seen, uh, Robert, you were always making a cake or cooking a pie. Did, uh, <laughs> are you doing any, any cooking tonight, or is the kitchen closed now? The kitchen is closed, but I did bake two pumpkin pies today. Are they easy or tough? They're easy. Do you use fresh pumpkin or canned? Canned. Isn't that cheating? It's cheaper and easier. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I hear that you're also the, uh, the, the, the chief cook around the, uh, the Gingrich household, that you uh, have a couple of special dishes you make. Why are, why are you the kitchen maven? <laughs> well, I do want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatic answer. Uh, for a long time, when I was a, a married person, I did most of the cooking because it was that or starvation. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Let's hang on for Evelyn in Wilford, Arkansas. Hi. Hi, Evelyn. It's Tom. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Doing great. You're doing a wonderful job. Oh, thanks, thank Evelyn. Thank God for you. Thank a you. show with wit and intellect, something we've been craving. Well, crave no longer and say hi to Robert and Kathleen Gingrich. They're right here. I'll do it. Good evening, Mr. and Ms. Gingrich. It's Hello. such a hi. pleasure to see you. Thank Are you. Are you looking forward to your trip to the White House? Oh, yes, definitely. Well, you know what? I think you're going to have a delightful time because you and Hillary have something in common. You're women who aren't afraid to say what you think, and we need more of it. By the Good way, luck to you. By, by the way, Evelyn, you make a point. Uh, you know, Mrs. Clinton is hardly a wallflower when it comes to speaking her mind. Absolutely, Absolutely. not. She's no cookie baker. <laughs> this Tom, is true. I can't tell you how good it is to see that white head on TV again. Well, thank you very, very kindly. It's nice to have this old, almost white head back on <laughs> yes. TV again. Wonderful it, to see you. All right, Evelyn, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. All right. Bye bye now. Uh, before we let you go, and it's getting very, very late back there in, in, uh, in Dauphin, Pennsylvania, I would assume that after our conversation here tonight, all of this will come to a halt. Will this be the end of the Gingrich's excursion into TV land? Say that again. Will this be the end of the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Tom, yours is our finale. Swan zone. Yeah. The uh, swan yeah, zone. Our swan, swan and, zone. And, 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 you know, a year from now when you look back on this, I hope that you'll mm -hmm. find this evening was pleasurable, and I... I hope that you'll find the whole thing wasn't uh, 
wasn't as negative an experience for you as it might have seemed during the last four or five days. There are some good folks that, uh, in the television business, as I'm sure you know. Oh, definitely. Yes, definitely. I don't think, I don't think Robert's too sure about that. Oh, I'm positive. I'm sure about that. I mean, like I said, it's a done deed. Let's, let's bury it and march on. And after you uh, make the trip to the White House, if you'd like, and we can do this earlier in the day, uh, we'd like a little report on how you found the Clintons and how you found the White House and, you know, what you did. If we could uh, give you a phone call or something like that, we'd be most appreciative. Well, I'd be glad to. Okay. And mm -hmm. again, you're really not sure when, but maybe this week. Well, that's what Newdy said. The sooner we do it, it'd be better. Now, you know, we don't refer to the Speaker of the House as Nudy. We call him Mr. Speaker. Well, he's my son, and I call him Nudy. Good for you. <laughs> he has never said, don't call me Nudy, Mother. Uh, he hasn't. All right. So if he did, I wouldn't do it. Robert and Kathleen, I appreciate you staying up very late tonight and for being uh, good sports about this. And uh, thanks again for your time, and I wish you all the best, and I hope to talk to you again in the future. Thank you, and you have a wonderful crew right here in my living room. Well, thank you for your they kindness to our be crew. Better. Thank they you for our be kindness better. to our crew there. I know you took them out to a restaurant the other night, and, <sighs> and uh, they appreciate that. And I'm glad to hear, by the way, you will not need eye surgery, that you're going to be fine. Oh, that's right, as far as I know. All right, thanks again, folks. Thank Bye -bye you. Now. Thank you. By the way, Kathleen Gingrich was facing the possibility of eye surgery, but she checked with her, uh, her eye doctor today. And a little stitch here, a little stitch there, and she's going to be fine and should be at the White House by... Uh, by the end of the week. Uh, back to wrap it up for uh, Monday night, early Tuesday, and a reminder about tomorrow night's programs coming up right after a short break, and I hope you'll stay with us. Have you ever renewed your driver's license? Had a cash machine? Nice picture. Fixed your car with a television. You're having a problem with your rotor. Can you walk me through that? You move your right hand. Oops. Or had an assistant. Good morning. Here are Who lived in your computer? The reference material I've gathered for your 10 o'clock meeting. And I'm still working on those playoff tickets. Good boy. You will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. You know, for all of you who took the time to call or write to us here at CBS in the past couple of days, and to everybody, I mean, I met a, a man on the street stopped today in his car and rolled down the window and said, you know, good luck at CBS. And many of you have done that here in Los Angeles and in New York and in San Francisco for the past four or five weeks. And I want you to know how much I appreciate your encouragement and your support and how happy we are to be at CBS. Back tomorrow night, same time, same station. Drive safely on the way home and sleep tight, America. Good night, everybody. Later tonight, head into the 21st century with the CD-ROM review, Deep Sea... What, another talk show? Hey, we're not the first, and I can promise you, we won't be the last. Charles Perez, weekdays at 4 on Channel 46.